Dr. Alex Chen, uh, Mr. Rock Chen, Mr. Albert Chow, uh, Dr. Kerry Yao, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. First of all, I would like to congratulate the Hong Kong Council for Accreditation of Academic and Vocational Qualifications on her 30th birthday, so happy birthday to the Council. Today, the Council's International Conference 2020 marks the highlight of a series of celebrative events and activities for her 30th anniversary. I feel much honored to be here to give a speech on behalf of the Qualifications Framework Secretariat as one of the co-organizers of this big event. In Hong Kong, though QF is much younger than the Council, but I think all of you will agree with me that QF and QA are brothers or sisters. So we are born to be very close partners, right? I remember some 18 years ago when QF was still an in initial conceptual idea in Hong Kong, the then Education and Manpower Bureau proposed to set up a qualifications framework, not just a qualifications framework, on its own. The exact wording I remember was to establish a qualifications framework and its associated quality assurance mechanism in Hong Kong. So in that sense, QF and QA are twin. That implies QF must be supported by a robust QA mechanism, while quality assurance is always a cornerstone of all the education and training deliverables riding on the QF platform. Therefore, when our Hong Kong qualifications framework was launched in 2008, about, eight, about 12 years ago, we also at the same time put in place a legal framework for its quality assurance mechanism. So that's why the Council HKCAVQ has been appointed by law as the quality assurance as well as the qualifications register authority underpinning our Hong Kong qualifications framework. As a quality assurance authority, HKCAVQ has on one hand served as a gatekeeper to make sure that all the qualifications recognized under the QF have met the QF standards. In other words, all locally accredited learning programs or qualifications on the qualifications register are quality assured. Through the qualifications register, different stakeholders like learners and employers can easily check and compare the level and credit of such locally accredited qualifications. Learners can also make use of the qualifications register to map out their own study pathways. On the other hand, HKCAVQ also plays an excellent role as a gate opener to facilitate different stakeholders to join QF. They have made dedicated efforts to streamline the accreditation procedures and enhance the overall quality assurance process. In turn, the council has contributed to cultivate a self-sustaining quality assurance culture, not just for providers, but also for the education training landscape in Hong Kong as a whole. This definitely helps build up a quality brand name for our Hong Kong Qualifications Framework on Lifelong Learning. Over the years, HKCAVQ has done tremendous work in support of the development and implementation of our Hong Kong Qualifications Framework. In order to meet, to better meet the needs of the industries, the focus of our, of our QF is to facilitate development and recognition of professional and vocational qualifications with a view to promoting the status and value of VPAC, what we call the, that is the vocational and professional education and training and supporting lifelong learning. One initiative to facilitate a closer linkage between education and employment is to assist various trades to develop industry specific vocational qualifications pathways, what we call VQP. It represents a roadmap for progression in learning and career advancement in a specific trade along which learners and practitioners can move upward through acquisition of the required occupation-based qualifications. During the development and pilot implementation of the VQP, HKCAVQ has given us genuine support and professional uh, advice to ensure that such VQP qualifications could meet the accreditation standards and also the industry needs from the quality assurance perspective. Likewise, we have also been working very closely with the Council for quite some time 
to explore the feasibility of recognizing professional qualifications under our Hong Kong qualifications framework, our ultimate objective is to promote a wider application of our Hong Kong qualifications framework and uplift the professional Im image of the VPAC. The Education Bureau finally launched this initiative two years ago, which is considered really a milestone in the QF development in Hong Kong. So I must say thank you to the Council once again for this. Without their expertise and support, uh, we would not have completed this mission so smoothly. Looking ahead, we expect that the education and training landscape will undergo significant changes in view of the emerging needs of our economy, while the vocational and professional education and training will be a key driver of manpower development of Hong Kong. More focus will be on how to ensure the practical relevance of training to workplace requirements. Practical and competency-based training components like on-the-job training, workplace learning and assessment will definitely carry more weight than ever. With more advanced technology, online mode of delivery of teaching and learning will become more and more popular, not just in the time of the pandemic. So all of the above would require a robust, credible, innovative, and effective quality assurance mechanism to be provided by HKCAVQ. So that will be a real challenge to the council in the future. In the years ahead, I shall expect an even closer partnership with the council, particularly in the context of promoting VPAC with the QF platform. In closing, may I here wish the Hong Kong CAVQ every success in the next 30 years and beyond, and all of you a very fruitful exchange of ideas and wisdom today. Thank you so much.